What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Board Games Are For Everybody, where today we're going to be taking a look at Royal Visit. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, didn't we already take a look at this game on the channel? And we did. However, as was pointed out in the comments of that video, we actually got a handful of rules incorrect. Now, this is definitely on me. It's true. I was a little hasty with taking a look at the game, I suppose. We had only played it a couple times, and I misinterpreted the rules. I skipped some rules, apparently. And I just wanted to clarify the things that we got incorrect in that video. However, in that comment section, we had some, some very, uh, very aggressive comments, I find. Some, some people uh, kind of took it to the next level, not just pointing out that we did things incorrectly, but demanding that we take that video down as it was doing more wrong than right. And also claiming that because of the inaccuracies of that video, they didn't trust any of my other videos. So here we are. We're going to take another look at Royal Visit, and we are going to do a deep dive into the rules of this game. So first things first, the first thing you're going to want to do when you're playing Royal Visit is you're going to want to open the box. You're going to want to open the box so that you can get to the contents inside. Now, as you can see, we have our instruction manual. We have all of our different pawns, but we will get to that stuff later. We're going to start with our rule book here. We're going to flip over to page number one. Principle of the game. The whole valley is buzzing. The king is coming. Prestige awaits your family if his majesty and his court accept the invitation to visit your magnificent chateau. Alas, your detested neighbor has the exact same idea. They will try anything to entice the king to their abode. Use the powers of the wizard and jester to tempt the king to your estate and become a legendary, to become a legend in the valley. I can't even, I can't even read correctly. Also something I got wrong. Let's, let's read that whole sentence again because I messed it up. Use the powers of the wizard and the jester to tempt the king to your estate and become a legend in the valley. So we're going to go over our contents. Now, the first thing that we got here, we have our game board, which would be this piece right here. We just lay this out. You'll see that we have blue on one side, bunch of symbols in the middle, red on the other side. We're just going to place that right there for the time being. And we're going to consult our friend, the Collins Gem English Dictionary from 1985, because it's the most recent dictionary I could find in our house it was from 1985. Now, if we go to page 223 in this book here, uh, 240, 224, closer. If we go to page 223, you will notice, uh, that's a, uh, you will notice down here that game board is not a word in the dictionary. It, it's two words. So if we take a look at game, it is described as a diversion, pastime, jest, Contest for amusement, scheme, strategy, animals, or... Oh, we are, we are in different definitions of game. We've gone into hunting and stuff. So the definition of game in our particular case is a diversion pastime. That's it. A diversion or a pastime. That should be a slash instead of a comma. How So that is our definition of game. Now, of course, we have to go to the definition of board, which takes us to page... 56 in our dictionary here. Ba -ba -ba. 56. And we are over here. A board is a flat piece of wood sheet of rigid material for specific purpose, i.e. a table, meals, group of people who administer company. Oh, we're, we're, uh, we're again, different descriptions of board. So the description of a board is a flat piece of wood, sheet, or rigid material for a specific purse, uh, purpose. Now, as you can tell, um, this is not a, uh, a, a piece of wood. However, it is a sheet of material 
for a specific purpose. So I suppose it does it does fit the definition of both a game and a board. It is a board used for a diversion or pastime. Now, the next thing that we have in the content section is our big crown side and little crown side crown token. Now, once again, if we refer to our dictionary on page 123, here we go, 123, we come down to crown. A crown is defined as a monarch's headdress, wreath for head, monarch, monarchy, royal power, formerly British coin. Oh, it's telling us the uh, definition of a monarchy, which is also helpful, I suppose. Uh, formerly British coin of five shillings. Oh, no, we are actually in British crowns now. So the definition of this crown is a monarch's headdress wreath for the head. And the definition of a token, if we make our way to page 547, this is a lot, a much bigger dictionary than I thought it was. 547. Our definition of a token is a sign or object used as evidence, a symbol, disc used as money, gift card, voucher, exchangeable for goods of a certain value. Now, that definitely fits the definition of a token as we have a little wooden disc, large crown side, small crown side. Everything seems to be lining up so far. The next thing we have is we have all of our playing pieces. We have the king, which if we make our way to page number 294 in our dictionary, Uh, right down here. A king is defined as a male sovereign ruler of independence, independent state, excuse me. A male sovereign ruler of independent state. Monarch, piece in game of chess. Oh, it is a piece in game of chess. That's true. Our definition of a king in this case is a male sovereign ruler of an independent state. As you can see, we have our king token right here. The next character token that we have is the two guard tokens. And if we make our way to page 240 of our dictionary, a guard is defined to protect, defend, be careful, take precaution against. That's as... as that's, that's the description we need. We also have a noun here as a person. Group. Oh, actually, this entire thing works for us. So a guard described protect, defend. This is the, the verb of guarding, I suppose, to guard. Protect, defend, be careful, take precaution against. Uh, also, a person, group that protects, supervises, keeps watch, sentry, soldiers protecting anything, Official uh, official in charge of train. Oh, well, that's not the guard that we need. We've gotten into trains. The definition we are looking for for this game would probably most likely be the one over here. Person, group that protects, supervises, keeps watch, sentry soldier protecting anything. So that is our definition of the guard. And we have two guard tokens right here, both being female guards. They're going to come over here with the king. The next thing that we have in our contents list here is the wizard token. Now, if we make our way to page number 591, we are getting close to the back of the book here. Oh, we're actually lucky. It's the first one on the page. A wizard is defined as a sorcerer, magician, or conjurer. That is a pretty good definition of a wizard. And this is our wizard token right here. Place that over. Last but not least, 
The final pawn that we have is the Jester token. If we make our way to page 288 of our dictionary here, and where are we? We've got Jersey, we have Jest, which I believe it's under here. Jester, a joker or court fool as uh, a history example, I suppose. I actually don't know how dictionaries work. I didn't know that that was a thing. So the definition of jester is a joker or the court fool, which in context to the game, the court fool is probably the more likely definition. And as you can see, we have our jester token right here. The final thing that we have in our content list is the 54 cards that are used to play the game. Now, if we make our way to page 75, this is the earliest that we've been in the dictionary so far. A card is defined as thick, stiff paper, piece of this giving identification, etic, etc. Illustrated card sending greetings. Well, that's not what we're doing in this. The definition of a card in context to the game would be thick, stiff paper, piece of this giving identification. And as you can see, we have our, what was it, 52? Nope, that's a normal deck. We have our 54 cards here in the deck. And I wouldn't necessarily say that they're stiff, but they're pretty, they're pretty thick. They're, they're a pretty good, they're a pretty good variation uh, not variation. They're, they're they're pretty pretty decent cards. They they got a good thickness to them. They don't feel cheap. We have our fifty four cards. So now that we've gone through the contents, let's go over the overview and the goal. The overview and goal of Royal Visit. In Royal Visit, you and your opponent must vie to attract the king to your chateau. On your turn, play a card from your hand to move characters or use the power of the wizard and jester to influence the position of the king and his court. You can then move the crown between the two duchies according to the position of each character. The first player to welcome the king or the crown into their chateau immediately wins the game. If the king can't decide, make sure he ends up in your duchy at the end of the game to get his final approval. We now move on to the elements of the game and the game board. You will notice that up in the top here, we have the green player's chateau, as well as the green player's duchy. Now, if we make our way to page 84 of our dictionary, it will give us the definition of a chateau. Right down here, you can see that it is defined as a castle, country house, and that's it. It always makes it seem like it's going to keep going on farther, but it doesn't. So a chateau is defined as either a castle or a country house. Now, in regards to the game that we're currently playing, it is more likely to be a castle than a country house. And... To continue with what we were just talking about, if we make our way to page 164, it's going to tell us the definition of a duchy. We can find it here. To call duck. I think I'm a little too far. Nope. Do you... Ah, right here. There we go. Duchy. A territory of, of duke of Duke Dukedom. It is a territory of Duke Dukedom. Uh, that's a little confusing. I'm not sure if I completely understand that. I think it would just be a territory of Dukedom or the territory of a duke. However, as of 1985, that is the definition of a duchy, a territory of Duke Dukedom. Now, if we continue on with our game board in the elements page here, you'll see that we also have the middle space of the board. Now, if we make our way to page 336 of our dictionary, it will describe the middle of something as an equidistant from two extremes, medium, intermediate, middle point, or part. And that is the definition of a middle. 
in terms of the game. And finally, on the right-hand side of the game board, we have the Red Player's Chateau, and we also have the Red Player's Duchy. Now, if we get to our text underneath the components here, the game board is divided into two duchies, separated by one middle space decorated by a fountain. On either end of the board are two chateaus, each one taking up two spaces. During setup, each player chooses one of the two chateaus. The zone in front of each chateau is that player's duchy. The crown track running along both duchies is where you'll move the crown token. The symbols opposite to the crown track remind you where to place the character's pawn on the board at the start of the game. The crown token, the big crown side and the little crown side. The crown token has two sides, a little crown side and a big crown side. It moves along the crown track at the top of the board during the game. We have our cards. There are four types of cards that allow you to move the four types of characters, king, guard, wizard, and jester. Each card type corresponds to a different type of character. The symbols show you how to move characters when you play the card. Last but not least for this page, we have the character pawns. Each pawn represents a type of character, king, guard, wizard, or jester. These characters can be moved by playing cards during your turn. They do not belong to a specific player, so either player may move them. The court refers to the group of both guards and the king. Now, this is a definition that I did not pull up when I was making a list of all the pages to go to, but we have to look up the definition of a court in case some people don't know what a court is. So let's see if we can find it here. We are at C-O-R, C-O-U-L. We have a count, a count, a counter, a coup, a courget, a courgette. Ah, there we go, a court. Space enclosed by buildings, yard, area marked off or enclosed for playing various games. Well, I would say that the best definition here is probably a space enclosed by buildings, which I suppose in terms of the character pawns, that being the guards enclosing the king, that it would actually be the king's court, I suppose, the guard in the king's court. So that's the definition of a court, according to the Collins Gem English Dictionary. So that was everything for page number three. Let's move on to page number four, the setup of the game. Number one, unroll the game board and make sure each player is seated in front of one of the chateaus found at either end of the board. So the first thing you're going to want to do, we're just going to move these guys uh, off to the side here for a sec, seeing as we don't need them yet, we are focusing on the game board, is you would have one player sitting on the far side and one player sitting on the opposite side. So I guess for this demonstration, we're going to be playing as the green player and our opponent is going to be the red player. Now for better visualization, visualization, we're just going to keep it like this for the time being so you can actually see everything that's going on. Number two, place the king on the crown space and a guard on each of the helmet spaces on the board. So we're going to take our crown, our crown piece. We're going to take our king token. We're going to place him right in the middle space here where the crown is. Next, we are going to take our two guards and we're going to be placing them on these two spaces with the helmet symbols. These are both two spaces away from the king on opposite sides. Number three, take the jester in one of your hands and the wizard in the other. Without letting your opponent see, ask them to choose one of your hands. Then place the chosen character on the side and the other on yours, on the corresponding spaces, either the jester shoe or the wizard hat. So we would take 
the pieces into our hands, let's say our opponent decided to take my left hand here, they would end up with the wizard, which means I would end up with the jester. Now, seeing as we said earlier that we were going to be the green side, I would take my jester piece, if my camera wants to focus. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. And we're going to place it on this side of the king, where the two symbols are. And then our opponent is going to get the wizard, who we are going to put on this space on the right side of the king. Number four, shuffle the deck of cards and deal eight to each player. Put the remaining cards near the board in a face-down deck. Leave room for a discard pile. So we're going to take our 54 cards and we're just going to shuffle them up here. And it said that we had to deal eight cards to each player. Oh, I actually, it would help if I was uh, shuffling the cards the correct way. I was apparently shuffling them backwards. That's probably not helpful when you're shuffling cards. People think you might be cheating. Okay, there we go. And that is eight. We will put our cards up here and we will keep our hands face down for the time being. Number five, place the crown token with the big crown side up on the middle space of the crown track next to the king. Uh, you, Oh, no, you can see it because of the camera of the angle. We're going to be putting the crown token with the big crown side up on the middle space above the king of the crown track. And last but not least, number six, you are now ready to play. The player with the wizard in their duchy between the fountain and their chateau takes the first turn. So the wizard is the first player to go, which means our opponent will be taking the first turn. So I hate to jump ahead of the instructions here, but we're just going to lay our cards out for the wizard so that we have a better time acknowledging what cards they have for their turn so that we can go over it. Okay, getting on to gameplay on page number five. You and your opponent will each take turns until the king or the crown enters one of your chateaus or the deck runs out for a second time. During your turn, take the three following actions. Play a type of card or use a power, move the crown, and refill your hand. Now, before we continue, I have to say this was something that I believe I messed up in the original video. When we initially learned the game, I was under the impression that you were only supposed to take one of these actions during your turn, not that you were supposed to do all of them. So I was under the impression that you could either play a card from your hand to move the different pieces, you could move the crown track based on where things are on the board, or you could refresh your hand and that was your turn. However, it turns out that you do all three actions during your turn. So let's get back to action number one, which is playing a type of card or using a power. Each card lets you move a character the exact number of spaces shown on that card. Choose a card from your hand, put it in the discard, then move the corresponding pawn as many spaces as shown on the card. You, you can then play another card of the same type as many times as you like to take additional movement actions. Note you cannot play a card if you cannot complete the entire movement as shown. So what that part is saying is that if you have multiple of the same type of cards. So let's say that you have multiple jester cards in your hand. You can play both of those jester cards to move the jester a total of six spaces in any direction. However, if you can't move the jester in six spaces, you can't play those cards. 
We are now getting on to the different types of cards that there are. Type number one is the guard card. You can either move either guard one space if the card has a one on it. If the card has a one plus one, you can move both guards one space each or one guard two spaces. If you have a card that has the helmet, the crown, and the helmet, you move both guards so that they are on two spaces on either side of the king's space. So what it's saying basically is that if you have a knight card in your hand, you can play that card and you can move either of the knights, sorry, they're guards, you can move either of the guards, there we go, you can move either of the guards, oh, it's just focusing on whatever it feels like, you can move either of the guards one space each in any direction, or you can move one guard two spaces in any direction. Next up, we have the Jester. One, two, three, four, five. Move the Jester one, two, three, four, or five spaces as shown. If you have an M, you move the Jester to the middle space of the board. With the Wizard, you have a one, a two, and a three. Move the Wizard one, two, or three spaces as shown. If you have a King card with a one, you move the king one space. The king's privilege ability, you can play two king cards to move the entire court. This is the king and his two guards one space in the same direction. This is the only exception to the rule that players must play one card at a time. So if you have... I don't have any in the hand. Do we have any in our hand? We do. We have two, actually. So, if you have one king card, you are allowed to move the king token one space in any direction. We're just knocking things all over the place. You can move the king one space in any direction, either to the right or to the left. If you have two king cards and you decide to play both of them, you can take your guards and you can place them on the two opposite sides of the space that the king is on. And we have a small bit of text down here to clarify some rules about the court. The king and his two guards make up the court. The king must always be between both guards, but not necessarily on the spaces adjacent to them. The king cannot be on the same space as a guard. The wizard and the jester can move freely and even stop on the same space as a member of the court. Now, this is another rule that I got incorrectly when we initially talked about this video. I was not aware. And I don't know if we just skipped that piece of text, what happened there. I was not aware that the king had to stay between the two guards. I didn't know that. So that was definitely a mistake on my part for overlooking that very simple rule. The king must stay in between the two guard pieces. We are now moving on to page number six. We have some examples of movement. Now, I gave some examples of movement, but just to be safe, we will read over these anyways. The, if it feels like focusing, the green player plays a guard one plus one card and moves one guard two spaces. They then play another guard one plus one card and move the same guard two more spaces. They then play a guard one card and move the guard one final space. The red player plays two king cards to move the entire court one space. Oh no, hold on. No, that was right. Two king cards to move the entire court one space. Then plays another king card to move the king a single space. Over here, we have the green player plays an M jester card and moves the jester onto the middle space. Then they play a jester four card and move the jester four more spaces. 
The red player plays a helmet, crown, helmet card and moves both guards to the space on either side of the king. Next up, we are going over the different player powers, starting with the wizard. The wizard's power. The wizard has the power to summon the king or one of his guards to the space that the wizard is on. If you want to use this power, do not play a card on your turn. Instead, move the character of your choice to the wizard's space, respecting the following conditions. You can only use this movement if the king remains between his two guards. The jester can never be summoned by the wizard. An example, the green player chooses not to play a card and instead use the wizard's power to move the king to the wizard space. Moving on to page number seven, we now have the jester's power. If the jester is between your chateau and the king, you can use the jester's power. Your jester card becomes wild cards. So all jester cards become wild cards that you can use to move any type of character respecting the following conditions. Every jester card you play during a single turn must move the same type of character, no exceptions. You can move both guards this way since they are the same type. You cannot play jester cards and any other, excuse me, I apologize. You cannot play jester cards and another type of character card on the same turn. If you play jester cards to move the king, the jester must remain between your chateau and the king to continue playing. An example, the jester is between the king and the green player's chateau, who can therefore use his power. The green player plays a jester three card and moves one of the guards three spaces. They then play a jester two card and move the other guard two spaces. We now move on to action number two, which is moving the crown. This is one of the things that, as I mentioned before, we did incorrectly in our initial video because I was under the impression that you only took one action. Move the crown on its track towards you according to the following. Move the crown one space for each character in your chateau. So every character that you have within your chateau, which is these two spaces at the end here, you gain one point on the crown track. So let's say that the red player had the wizard, a guard, and um, let's say the jester's over here for whatever reason. And the green player has a guard in their chateau, and that's it. When you go to phase two, the crown moves according, I believe, according to both things. I'm just going to reassure myself of this to make sure that we aren't doing this incorrectly. Uh, move the crown one space for each character in your chateau. These two conditions. Oh, and move the crown one space if the entire court, the king and both guards is in your duchy. So this may just be specific to the player at the time. I don't believe that... I don't believe that uh, this guard being over here would matter, but we'll keep it there for the time being. Uh, these two conditions cannot be combined. Here are some examples. The jester and one guard are in the red player's duchy. The red player moves the crown two spaces. The entire court is in the green player's duchy, and the wizard is in their chateau. The green player moves the crown two spaces forward. towards them. Now, they seem to have already had points when they did that, but that's okay. So, our example here, let's say it was the wizard's turn, because they have three characters inside their chateau. We would move the crown token, one, two, three spaces up the track towards their chateau. And that's going to bring us to the final page, page number eight, and we're going to start with refilling your hand. Draw cards from the face-down deck until you have eight cards in your hand. When the deck is empty, shuffle the discard pile and make a new face-down deck. 
and flip the crown token to its little crown side. After refilling your hand, the turn ends and your opponent can now take their turn. So once the deck runs out completely and you have to create a new deck, you would just take all the cards in the discard pile, shuffle the deck, and the token would be flipped over to the small crown side to indicate that we are on deck number two. We are now at the end of the game section. The game ends if you meet one of the following victory conditions. If the king or the crown is in a chateau, the player who owns that chateau wins the game. If the deck runs out when the crown token already has the little crown side up, the player with the king in their duchy wins the game. If the king is on the middle fountain space when the deck runs out, shuffle the discard pile to make a new deck and continue playing until either victory condition is met. We also have some reminders, types of cards, the guards, the jester, the wizard, the king. Powers are on page six and seven. The crown token is on page seven as well. Alrighty, let's just quickly go over this end game again. If the king or the crown is in the chateau, the player who owns the chateau wins the game. If the deck runs out when the crown is on the crown, oh, sorry. If the deck runs out when the crown token already has the little crown side up, the player with the king in their duchy wins the game. If the king's in the middle space, then players reshuffle the deck and basically play until the king ends up not in the middle, I suppose, which I would guess the first person to play is going to end up winning unless you keep playing until, I mean, if just the king has to be in the duchy and he's in the middle, whoever would go first would end up winning, right? Or do you have to go back and forth? Does this have to be like a multiple turn situation kind of thing? But that's all the rules for Royal Visit. So let's reset everything here and we're going to do a couple hands to... Kind of, uh, oh, I don't remember who was the jester and who was the wizard. Oh no, I forgot. I'm I'm cheating already. I don't remember who the jester and who the wizard was. I guess we're going to end up being the wizard. Uh, I don't remember who was who. So, oh no, you know what? I was the jester, I believe, because it said that whoever has the wizard goes first. So I believe I was the jester. So we are on turn number one of the wizard. This is their current hand. They have some wizard cards. They have some guard cards. They have a jester card and they do not have any king cards. So let's say that they wanted to try and get a guard closer to their side of the board. They are going to want to play some of these guard cards so that they can start moving some stuff. So we're going to play these two guard cards to total four movements. Now, by playing these, let's just place those in the discard, we can either move two guards, two spaces, or we can move one guard, four spaces total. So let's say the wizard just decides to move this guard on the right-hand side, four spaces down towards their side of the board. Oh, I guess I should put this back here, seeing as it is a start of the game. We don't want to cheat by giving the wizard more crown points early on in the game. And now that we have moved, uh, we don't want to play any more guard cards. Not that we can. I believe this is... I guess it's not counted as a different card. I guess it's not counted as a different card. It has the same image. Anyway, we've played our card. We moved the guard four spaces to uh, towards the red chateau. We are now going to go to step number two, which, if you remember, was to move the crown piece for each character that is in your chateau, which currently there is none. Also, you would move it one space if the entire court is in your duchy, which it is not. So the crown would not move. And then we go to our final step, step number three, which is to draw two more cards and add them into our hand. So now that's... The wizard has gone. We're going to move on to myself, the jester, and we're going to take our turn. As you can see, we have a good spread of cards. I think we have pretty much everything. We have a knight. We have some jesters. We have some kings. And we have a wizard as well. So 
In our case, our power for the jester was that if we are between the king and the chateau, we can use our jester cards as wild cards, I believe. I'm going to double check that just to be completely safe and make sure we aren't giving any incorrect facts while going through this playthrough. <laughs> uh, Jester's power. Every Jester card you play. Oh, if the Jester's between your Chateau and the King. That's all I need to know. Between the Chateau and the King. We're good to go. So because I am between the Chateau and the King, and I only have one Knight card, and I want to try and move some Knights towards my side, seeing as the King can only be between myself, or, sorry, the King can only be in between his guards. So the Jester's not going to get him very far to towards his chateau so long as the guard is sitting here on this space. So we only have one knight card in our hand. That's not going to move the knight very far. But like we were saying, because we are between the king and our chateau, we can actually use our jester cards as wild cards to move the guard. So we want to move one, two, three, four, five, six spaces which we can do by using these three, two Jester cards. So we're going to use these three cards as wild cards to move the guard six spaces. And that guard is now in our chateau. So when we move towards phase two of our turn, which is to move the crown token, we are going to move the crown token one space towards our side because we have one character in our chateau. We are now going to draw three cards to replenish our hand up to eight and we are going to go on to the wizard's second turn so the wizard now has some more varied cards they also have every type of card this time now that we have drawn new cards now as we went over in the rule book the wizard is allowed to bring anyone from the court, I believe anyone from the court, I don't think he can move the jester, to the same space that he is on. The wizard has the power to summon the king or either of his guards to the space the wizard is on. I just want to make sure you couldn't move the jester as well. So the wizard is going to want to start making his way towards his chateau in order to pull the king as close as possible. However... The rule book does say you are not allowed to summon the king into the chateau. I don't know if you can summon a guard into the chateau, but it does say you can't summon the king into the chateau. Uh, you can only use this movement if the king remains between his guards. The jester can never be summoned. Whoa, well, it doesn't say you can't move it into your chateau. Huh. I guess you'd really have to be on your toes. just says it has to still be between the guards. Hmm. Huh. Well, I would have... Man, that's pretty overpowered. I would have thought you can't put it into the Chateau. Man, this game... See, I, I would have been playing that incorrectly the first time, too. That's just nuts. That's a crazy power. So the Wizard's going to want to start trying to get into his Chateau, if that's the case, and then we're just going to have to move the guard a couple spaces as well. So the Jester's going to have to be on his toes trying to move him towards his side. So, what the Wizard is going to want to do... Now, they only have four wizard tokens here, but they can use these four in order to move four spaces towards their chateau. That's going to help them out later on because they will be able to summon the king or summon a guard or move into their chateau on the next turn. Things. We have to draw two cards to replenish the cards that we just used. And we have no one in our chateau. The court is not in our duchy. So the wizard is not going to be moving the crown piece back towards him. So we are now moving on to the jester's second turn. The jester sees that the wizard is moving towards his chateau and probably thinking, well, I'm going to try and move the king that way. So the Jester is maybe going to want to try and get that guard closer to him in order to prevent the wizard from using his power because the king has to stay between the two knights. 
So what the jester is probably going to want to do is use a bunch of these knight cards that appear to be in its hand. How many can we move here? One, two, three, four. We can go a maximum of five before we get adjacent to the king. So let's say we use these three cards, a one plus one, a one plus one, and a one, in order to move the guard five spaces, which will put it beside the king. We will now replenish our hand, three cards, and it will move on to the wizard's third turn. Now, the wizard is in a, another predicament here. In fact, I actually missed a step. I missed a step in our instruction. I apologize for that. We replenished our hand. We did not move the crown towards the green chateau because of the guard that we have inside of our chateau. So the crown piece has moved one more space. That was an error on my part. I apologize. And we are now on to the wizard's third turn. Now that the wizard's plans have kind of been foiled, uh, by the jester here. He's going to have to find a way to bring things towards him, which at this point, it, using his power is probably still the best option. So he's going to want to move three spaces. Now, we can't move three spaces. We only have two twos for the wizard. And as the rules said, we cannot move farther if we can't make the complete movement we can't make that movement so the best thing we could do is use our one two wizard card and move our wizard into the chateau here now because the wizard is in the chateau i believe this is going to move the crown token one space towards the wizard i don't believe it's just if the guard's in there i think it's just if the wizard's in there or sorry, if a character is in there. Mm -hmm. Yep, if it's any character. So the wizard's actually going to gain one point on the crown track. That's pretty nice. We're going to draw one card to replenish, and that is going to be the end of the wizard's third turn. We're not going to move on to the jester's third turn. We're going to see what we got here. Now that the wizard is in his chateau, we're probably going to want to try and prevent him from moving guards around, which is likely what's going to happen. The wizard's going to want to get more people into his, into his chateau. So what the jester's probably going to want to do is start moving himself because we want to try and get over here so we can continue using our power to make the king go pretty far. However, we only have one Jester card currently. And we have a handful of Wizard cards, so it might be in our best interest to move the Wizard so that we can try and replenish our hand into some more Jester cards that we can use as Wild cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these three Wizard cards, totaling five. We have two twos and a one. We're going to move the wizard five spaces. This is going to prevent the wizard from getting more points from being in his chateau. It's also going to prevent him from teleporting a guard all the way into his chateau. We're going to replenish our hand by three cards. We are going to move the token one space towards us because we still have a guard in our chateau. And we're going to move on to turn number four for the wizard. Now, the wizard has a bunch of jester cards, and he could completely block us from using our power right now by moving us into his chateau, and he'll still get a point for us being in his chateau. So that might be in his best interest. He can't really use his power because he's only going to be able to move the guard right here. He can't move the other guard, and he can't move the king because moving this guard would put the king outside of in between, and moving the king would put the king outside of being in between, in between the two guards. So he's probably going to want to use like all of these to move us into his chateau and also cut off 
us being able to use our power for the king, to move the king. So he has four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he can't do nine. So he's going to do seven, which is his best option. So he's going to use these two jester cards, a three and a four. Oh, and we can actually also do a one. I didn't notice we had that one over there. So we can actually do eight total. And we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is going to put the jester into the wizard chateau. The wizard is going to draw three cards to replenish his hand. He is also going to gain one on the tracker because the jester is in his side. And we're going to move back to the jester. Alrighty, what do we got for the Jester here? The Jester is now blocked off from being able to use his power. However, we have quite a lot of cards, actually. Um, <laughs> quite a lot of cards. So I think what I want to do is I want to play these three King cards. Not to move the guards between him, which you would only have to play two, but to actually move the King three spaces. So we're going to play these three cards to move the king three spaces towards our chateau. We're going to replenish our hand. I was really hoping we were going to get some more jester cards, but we just have a lot of knight cards. However, we aren't really in a position to use our jester cards anyway. We're going to move one space on the track for having the guard in our chateau. And we're going to move back to the wizard. Now, the Jester is stuck on that side for the time being. There's really no point in us using our Jester cards. We're trying to keep him as far away from the King as possible. So what we might want to do is potentially... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, I completely misspoke on our last turn when I was talking about the guards. Playing two King cards allows you to move the entire court. That was that was on me. I, I wasn't... This card here is the one that that brings them between each other. I just got the wrong. That's that's my fault. I apologize. I apologize for that one. I did not want to put the two guards between them, which is the rule. That it's the correct rule. I just said that it was the wrong. Uh, said it is the wrong thing. Um, so yeah, the, the playing the two king cards moves the entire court one space. That was on me. Anyway, back to. The wizard. Uh, the wizard might want to move closer to his chateau in order to start teleporting things, which would be helpful. We could also just try and move move the king. There's really no point in us using the thing that puts both guards beside the king because that's going to give the green player a point on their turn for having the entire court in the duchy. just want to confirm that is one point and not two points. Move the crown one space for each character. Move the crown, yeah, one space for both. One space for both. Okay, so the jester, or the, the wizard, sorry, is probably just going to try and move closer to his own space. So we're going to use these two twos in order to move the wizard four spaces. One, two, three, four. Towards his chateau, we're going to take two cards to replenish our hand. And we're going to move on to the jester. Now, we have a bunch of knight cards, which is just nuts. Okay, so we're probably going to want to play those knight cards. Now, I think you're allowed to retrace, so I think we could actually do it. Is we could play all four of these for a total of eight, a total of eight movements. Either the guard moving two spaces or both guards moving one space. So let's say we played this. This guard moves one. This guard moves one. Say we play this. This guard moves one. This guard moves back. We play this. This guard moves one. This guard moves one. Now, we can't do much else, unfortunately, because that's going to... We'd either have to move this out of our chateau, which we don't really want to do. 
And we can't really move this one back much further because the king is in the way. So I think we're just going to stop at the three. We're going to draw three cards to replenish our hand. We are going to get two points on the crown because we have a character in our chateau. We also have the entire court inside of our duchy. So we're going to get two points on the crown track. And we're going to move back to the wizard. Now, the wizard, seeing that the entire thing is in the court here, he doesn't really have any knight cards. He only has a knight card to move a knight two spaces, which isn't going to get it particularly far. So what the wizard is going to want to do is, well, I mean, he could use his power in order to bring a guard to him, but he could also put play his one wizard, which would both move him closer into his chateau, but would also gain him an extra point on the crown track. But because we haven't used the wizard's power yet, let's say that the wizard wants to use his power. The wizard decides that they're going to use their power, which means they aren't going to play a card from their hand. They're going to take the piece that they want to move, which in this instance can only be the right hand guard, and they're going to move it to the same space that they are on. And that's their turn. So there's no refreshing. They do still have the jester in their chateau, so they're going to gain one point on the track here. And we're going to move on to the Jester once again. Now, I just want to do a quick double check of what the M does. I believe I know what it is, but I just want to be safe. The M, move the Jester to the middle space of the board. That makes sense, M for middle. The Jester would probably want to do that, honestly, to get in into the... To get back into a place where the king uh, can be, where the king can, uh, where he can use his power again, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So we would use our jester middle card in order to move our jester back into the middle. This is also going to prevent the wizard from gaining points on the crown track. We are then also going to use our jester five, which is going to allow us to move our jester five spaces. And we could move three more spaces with our Jester 3, which would take us into the Chateau. But if the Jester is in the Chateau, he can't use his power. However, the King's pretty pretty far onto our side already, so I don't think that's an issue. I think we're going to try and take the Crown Points by using the 3. So if we go 3, we're now in the back of our Chateau. So we're going to gain 2 points for having 2 characters in our chateau. I believe it's one point for each character that's in the chateau. A lot of rule checking, but we just want to make sure that we get all of the rules correct. Move the crown. One space for each character in your chateau. So yep, two spaces. Oh, knocked my camera. Let's readjust that. Sorry about that. There we go. And we are going to draw, what was it, three cards? Three cards to replenish our hand. We got another middle, which we aren't going to need for the time being. We got some more kings. A lot of kings. We have a lot of kings. Okay. And that is going to take us to the wizard once again. So the wizard seeing that the jester is both going to win because of crown points and because the king is in his duchy and very close to his chateau, he's probably going to want to at least move that knight or the jester out of the chateau so that they can't get two crown points on their turn. So what the jest, not the jester, what the wizard would most likely do, they, oh, well, actually they do have a thing to get but that would just move everything closer to, <laughs> closer to the guy. So I think what they would most likely do, I think their best option really is just to pull either the knight or the jester out of the space. And the easier, the, the easier one to do would probably be the knight, seeing as you need to move the king past the knight. You're going to have to take up at least one more turn in order to get the knight there. So they're probably going to move the knight out with their two knights, 
to move the knight two spaces closer to the queen, to the king, not the queen. Apologies. Uh, they could have played one of their knight cards to bring both of the knights, uh, both of the guards, sorry, the guards, not the knights, to bring both of the guards uh, beside the king, but that's going to put the entire court into the jester's duchy, which was going to give him more points anyway. So that would be the... The wizard's turn, they would draw. They have no points to score on the crown track. And that's going to bring us back to the jester. Now, seeing as the jester has a two knight, which can move the knight back into their chateau, they're going to win the game at the end of this turn because, as you remember, on the back here, if the king or the crown is in the chateau, the player who owns that chateau wins the game. So all that the jester has to do is play their knight two card. They can move this knight two spaces. They're going to move the crown two spaces to the right, and the crown has now entered their chateau, which means the green player is the victorious player, and that is a playthrough of Royal Visit. We went through the instructions. We got them all correct this time. We did have to do a little bit of checking, so that was, you know, on me for just being forgetful, I suppose. But we got through it, and we did it correctly. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this revision of the Royal Visit How to Play Hopefully it was in-depth enough for all of you. We gave some good definitions. We went through the rule book, and we even did a full playthrough of the game where the jester took the victory by getting the crown into his chateau. So thank you guys very much for stopping by. If you enjoyed this how to play slash playthrough, uh, let me know down in the comments below. If you decided that you wanted to pick up Royal Visit because of this video, let me know that down below too. It's always interesting to see what kind of videos, uh, videos, what kind of games people end up picking up based on the stuff that we talk about on the channel here. Uh, if you are over on Instagram, you can check us out at the Board Games Are For Everybody Instagram page. Uh, we post pictures of the games that we're playing, games that we pick up outside of the monthly pickup videos here on YouTube, and just general gaming stuff in general. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully I will see you all next time. Until then, just remember that board games are for everybody, no matter your skill level, no matter how impatient you are to make a video on a game that you like. Uh, <laughs> however you like playing games, complex, easy, um, uh, being a little too hasty to post stuff, whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're into, right? Uh, thank you guys very much for stopping by. Hopefully I will see you all next time. But until then... Peace.